Morning, what's going on YouTube? Welcome to Westies Angling. You're joining me and my dad today at Lakeside Fishery for another fishery review. This particular fishery is near Chorley, Eccleston, and we're just having a walk around the lake now trying to find a peg. It's fairly easy to find this fishery. The sat nav brought us right here. Uh, prices, it's £7 for one rod and £10 for two. I'm going to be fishing two rods today. I'm going to have one rod out on a bomb and one rod out on the method feeder. So something a little bit different today. Where do you fancy, Dad? We'll just come down to have a look at the lake. We've never fished this fishery before, but it's been recommended to us. Oh yeah, loads of bubbles coming up there. Look guys, with it being the first time that we've fished here, it's always going to be a little bit of a guess on where we need to go. Obviously, we just need to use our watercraft. We'll look where the activity is on the lake, where the bubbles are coming up, where the reeds are, where we think the carp are going to be holed up. The other two chaps came straight here and they've gone right down the other side to a peg. So whether that's the better side, we don't know. But you've got to fish a fishery a few times, haven't you, Dad, before yeah, you, yeah, you kind yeah. of get to know it, don't you? And you, yeah. you find where the best spots are and things like that. But with these fishery reviews, we've got to take the best guess best estimation on uh, where the fish are going to be so uh, i'm going to bring the rest of my stuff down i think i've uh, pretty much decided on this peg here next to these bulrushes and reeds which i think you'll agree is probably one of the best pegs on the lake that i think that it's nice and open i can have a rod down that side i've just got to maybe try and get that bulrush up and out the way and uh, maybe one rod out. I think you are better on probably the other side of the tree so you can fish over down this margin and over uh, there's loads of bubbles coming up just out there dad from that them trees and that opposite peg. I don't think anybody will fish there one because that peg's broken and two it's right under trees yeah. so I yeah. think you might be all right. That's your pay station there's a fairly big car park here plenty of parking spaces like I said I don't think it's a, a mega popular fishery this I'd never heard of it before and neither had my dad before somebody recommended it. I thought this was a fishery at first, <laughs> uh, but it must be like a holding stock pond. The rules at this fishery aren't mega straightforward. I'll show you now. <laughs> Basically it says pellets as hook bait only, no ground bait, no paste, no bread. So basically you can't use anything. <laughs> no, I'm always joking. We've rung up and we've clarified and she's happy with us using method feeders and two mil pellets on there as long as we're not piling loads of bait in. They just want you to keep the bait to a minimum or the loose feed to a minimum. If uh, you're wondering about these rules, hopefully that clears it up for you. So basically you can use pellets as feed, but um, they don't want you putting absolutely loads in. But yeah. That's your little pay station and then the lakes just down this way. Looks like a nice fishery, fairly well maintained. Fishing's dawn till dusk. Ideally want to be fishing margins, I would have thought. I'm not sure how deep it is. The idea is that I was going to fish method feeder a little bit further out and bomb down the margin. I've tied up some slightly longer hook lengths to fish the bomb. Some 10 inch ones rather than four inch method feeder hook lengths which I'll show you when we set up. If you're wondering what time it is, it's about half six in the morning. I'm still half asleep, so that's probably why I can't talk. It's a little bit of a walk from the car park, but not too far. I'm sure that most of you would manage. So fingers crossed we have a good day today. Like I said, I'm going to set the bomb against the method feeder. They don't want you piling loads of bait in, as I've said. So uh, I'll be casting probably every, I don't know, half an hour or so, something like that. Probably every fish. I'm, uh, I'll leave it in a little bit longer than I normally would in summer, just to try and stick to the rules. Like I said, the fine way you're using method feeders here, they just don't want you casting out every two minutes, putting loads of bait in, polluting the water, that kind of thing and keep the loose feed to a minimum. But yeah, slightly different rules <laughs> than what we're used to. Uh, fisheries normally don't mind you putting pellets in. These days, they don't like you putting loads of ground bait in, but usually they're fine with pellets. So, bit of an odd one, but you've got to try and work your way around the rules where you can. And obviously, if you're ever unsure of rules, you can always clarify with the owners or with the bailiff. There's usually a contact number on websites and things like that, but this is my dad's peg. So where do you think you're going to be fishing, dad? <laughs> I've crossed from my peg there where them bubbles are <laughs> and down them reeds you can always are you on the alarms yeah okay anyway right I'm gonna go and get the rest of my stuff and I'll get fishing just 
just take the rest of my stuff down. I'm gonna be fishing tip today. I'm not fishing on the alarms like my dad. I prefer fishing tip where I can, to be quite honest with you. Right. Like I said, I've never heard of this fishery until it was recommended to me. But like I say, it looks like a nice place. It's right in the countryside. Must be quite an old fishery because a lot of the pegs need maintenance and that. Which isn't a problem. You've just got to work around it. Bloody hell, I need to start going to gym. I'll start using my barra. Knackered. Got myself a new smaller feeder bag as well. For those of you that are interested. Uh, it's a Capilam one, like the feeder chair that I've got. And I like it because it's got this uh, quite a large compartment in the top. So I've got my hook lengths, got my wafters, and then I've got my feeders. So uh, I like that it's all easy access. You can use it as a bit of a table next to you. I like bags like that. So very similar to my greatest prodigy one. I'm going to put my feeder chair here, I think, straight on. That way, like I said, I can have a rod down here, down this margin, towards the tree. And I can have a rod on these side of the reeds as well. And we'll see which side does the best. Can also fish straight out. All I'd have to do is just move my chair to point this way slightly. And then I've got a good indication there from the tip. Tell you what, Dad, considering we've never heard of this place, it's bloody busy, isn't it? So there's already, I think, eight, eight anglers on. And it's only a small lake. Strange. Literally never heard of it, have we? So somebody's already into a fish. Dad's had a liner. So it's all good signs. Uh, I've got the boring stuff out of the way. I'm pretty much set up. I've got a bank stick cam set up here. Uh, I'm going to be fishing uh, double feeders to start with and then probably swap on to bomb a little bit later on on one of the rods. Just need to get this reed out. I'll move it. That's it. Let's move it out of the way a bit. Okay folks, so primarily going to be using these today. I'm going to be using the pink 8mm band and wafters and then the Aquastim F1 Supreme Sweet Fish Meal wafters as well. So both in 8mm and they should work perfectly. I'll probably focus on using them on the bomb because they're the most light pellets and uh, these on the feeder. But like I said, starting off on two method feeders and then we'll swap on to bomb. Right, let's get these feeders out. Already put my hook lengths on. 10 pound main line, I'm fishing, and nine pound hook lengths. Dad keeps getting little bleeps. I managed to get that reed out of my swim. I've just bent it back and over. A little bit of gardening. I'll go pink, eight mil on this right hand side, and the aqua stim on the left hand side. Decent size 12 hook. I've not mixed any fresh pellets up. These are just Aquastim pellets that I had mixed up and I've frozen. So I'm reusing pellets. And there we go, they're absolutely perfect. Defrosted. Dad keeps getting loads of liners. I'm on a bit of a slant here, I think. Because I'm fishing close range method feeder, I'm always going to check my drag. Just so I don't get broke. I could do with just lessening that off a bit. The fellas that came before and went, <laughs> That's definitely a carp, Dad. <laughs> so the fellas that came at the same time as us, he's already had two fish fishing over to the island, just for everybody's information. But my dad's into a fish there. I'll let you know what it is when he lands it. So fishing to the island could be good tactics here today. But like I said, my dad's had a fish there. You'll be able to see where we're fishing here from the video. It's going to be very difficult for me to film my dad's catches today because I'm fairly far away from him. Certainly taking line, that fish. I'm not squeezing these hard around the feeder. And then this one I'm just gonna drop on the other side. My dad's had his close in, down the margin. It's a nice mirror, Dad, about seven pound. Yeah. Nice fish, chunky, it's got belly on it, hasn't it? Fought well. Yeah, yeah it did fight well. So, nice condition, no mouth damage. Go start that, Dad. You only had your feeder in about five minutes. Yeah. Awesome. And that was on a yellow essential cell wafter. 
So one of the new ones that they've released, that's mainline match. And they're just dumbbell wafters. So if you can make out my rod tips there, you can see that I've not got an aggressive bend in the tip round to the feeder. Now the reason for that is I'm fishing close range method feeder. And what we want is a little bit of give in the line, just in case a fish brushes against the line. Because what that means is it's not going to spook the fish. Okay. Also, when you're fishing close range like this, and when I say close range, I mean like within 10 foot, 15 foot of where your feeder fishing, the drag is also set fairly low, which means that you're not going to get broke on the take. It is very easy on the method feeder, if you're fishing locked up, a bit of a knock then, to get broke on the take. And I've just had a twitch on both sides, which is absolutely superb so far. It means there's fish on both sides of the swim. They just need to find my hook bait. Now, if the method feed is working for us all day, there's no point in me swapping over to a bomb. But like I said, I have tied up some hook lengths, so I can change over to the bomb if I need to. And to be honest with you, I'd just like to give it a try. It's a technique that I want to start practicing with more. I've put my brolly up today, not because it's due to rain, I think it's done its raining overnight, but it just gives me a little bit of privacy. It's quite open on the opposite side here. And obviously with me filming, try and be courteous where I can when I'm filming. And if I'm not talking loud today, it's because I don't want to disturb the person in the next peg. So I'm going to keep my voice low. Right, I think it's time for a coffee while we're waiting for this first bite. I'm going to give this 15 minutes and then I'll recast. And if you're from this kind of area and you've got any suggestions on where you want us to do a fishery review, feel free to drop a comment in the comment section or send me a message on the Westies Angling Facebook page or Instagram. And if you're not already subscribed to the channel, now's your chance to do so. So my dad has said that that fell is in again over to the island. So it could be that the island peg is the one to go to if you want to come and visit here. Do, do you think he's fishing tight into it? Does it look like it? So, not mega tight into the island, but I've had loads of tweaks. Yeah. Yeah, on both sides. Just no uh, hook up yet. So, we're not sure what size the fish go to in here, but we will find out for you, hopefully before the end of the video. If not, I'll leave a note in the description. But uh, I would have thought well into double figures. Most places like this, they'll go to sort of 18 pound. I think it's a predominantly carp fishery. Dad's into another fish on that left hand side. He's not had anything on the right hand side, a bit further out. Well, that seven pounder he had on before really went for it. He was playing it a good five or 10 minutes. And he's obviously, he's not fishing light, he's fishing a similar sort of strength to me. We drive a fish heavier. It doesn't make any difference, I believe, to the fishing. Fishing that little bit stronger, you won't catch any less fish, in my opinion. I'm on the black coffee today because I run out of milk. <laughs> <laughs> just have to take it easy, Dad. I'll go and get my rods out. That's a cracker. Look at that. Second fish in. Oh, Dad. It's definitely not far off a double. I think I'll put that just, what do you think, just shy of a double? Oh, that's a double, that. I don't know. If I'd have caught it, Dad, it definitely wouldn't have been a double. <laughs> Just getting my rods out so we can weigh my dad's fish. So a few of you have said to me, when you're filming your dad's fish, you know, uh, why are your rods not getting dragged in and so on and so forth. But I use bait runners for that reason. While I'm filming, I can just knock these on, film my dad quickly, come back to my rods. And I know that, you know, the, the fish isn't going to drag my rod in and the fish is going to be safe. So, there you go, Dad. Hopefully I put my scales in. In my new bag, there we go. Let me know what it is. What do we think, folks? I'm gonna go nine pound. I'm Wait again. Yeah, it's a big fish, that. It 10, is a 12, big fish. That, 10, 12. Fair enough. Double. It's not often you catch a double, is it, Dad? No, it's not. Not often you catch, is it, Dad? <laughs> you see, I always put him at best swim, don't I? You know what I mean? <laughs> Both of my dad's fish today have been on the new essential cell wafters. I'll show you which ones. 
these. So mainline match, essential cell, dumbbell wafters, really sweet, fruity, pineapple type flavour. <laughs> My dad's just got to run, and all I can hear is his flask and everything being knocked over. <laughs> that is certainly the better swim. He's fishing the exact same way as me. It is not skill, guys. It is not skill. <laughs> Look at this, eh? Papa West's on fire. Another good one, Dad. Looks decent. Very tight swim, this, isn't it? Yeah. Common. Yeah. Is that your first common today? Yeah. It's yeah, it's, it's a nice fish, that, Dad. Not as big as that mirror, but... Still a nice fish. Well hooked in the side of the mouth. They're all pristine, aren't they? Yeah. Really nice fish. Tell you what, folks, let's make this a little bit more interesting and, um, and do a little experiment. Let's swap this to a small bomb and see if it makes a difference. So, like I said to you before, I've already tied up some hook lengths ready to fish bomb. They're just a little bit longer, tied up in the same configuration as a method feeder hook lengths with a band, just a bit longer, that's all. Otherwise they're the same. And these bombs are just a 30 gram little purr bomb, little inline lead, 1.5 ounce if you work in ounces. And then we're just gonna Tie on a swivel with a nice strong knot. Really small these swivels. I think they're a size 11 ring swivel. Don't quote me on it. But they fit perfectly into those little NGT weights. I'm just going to wet my knot there. Pull that down tight. Very, very strong knot that. Definitely won't be breaking at the knot. Just going to trim that tag end off. There we go. So I've just got a little bit of rig rubber. Oh, fish on, guys, fish on. Don't think it's big. I, that was just a little bit further down that right hand margin. That wasn't too aggressive of a bite, to be honest with you. I don't think it's small. That's a nice carp, that. Luckily, I managed to tie that, sw <laughs> that swivel on just in time. Um, so I've just literally just dropped that bomb down <laughs> that margin there. It's not going to come off. <laughs> it's not a bad fish at all, that. Ooh. This is on pink wafter. It's definitely not deep here in the margins. It's probably only a couple of foot deep. There we go, in the net. Look at that little football of a carp. <laughs> oh, weird. Hey, Dad, come and have a look at this carp. <laughs> It's uh, wide, as wide as anything. How heavy do you reckon that is? It's a decent fish, isn't it? Do you think? Do you not think it's more? It's like, it's like it stopped growing at its tail. <laughs> How weird. <laughs> Cracker that, actually. I think it's heavier. I think it's heavier than anything. It it's got a great big belly on it. Football and a half. But nice first fish. Can't complain at that. Where are we that one? Uh, just a little bit further down them reeds oh, on that, that right hand side, yeah. Well, we're actually just going to wear this out of interest. Because it's a right podgy thing. <laughs> £9.4 four ounce? No, four ounces. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, I, I don't think you, you've probably not reset them right, have you? <laughs> I think it's a bit heavier than that. £10.3. I knew it, look at the size of the belly on it. Yeah, £10.3. Oh, it's a double. We've both both had a double today then. What are your thoughts on the fishery so far, Dad? 
Oh, yeah. Nice fish. Yeah, they are nice fish. Very odd carp. That's what keeps it interesting for me, catching odd fish like that. Well, folks, if I don't catch another fish all day, I'm chuffed with that. Uh, really nice fish, really nice oddball of a fish. But I don't think that will be the only fish we catch today. So that was just a little bit further down that margin. So like up and round, a bit closer towards this tree sort of thing that's overhanging. That was on the method feeder. We've got our bomb set up, so I'm going to get it back out. Right, folks, let's get this method feeder back out and then we'll carry on with the bomb set up. But yeah, that was on a pink wafter. So we'll keep that pink wafter on there. Oops. When you've frozen pellets and you're throwing them back out again, I just had a touch of water when I'm setting up. Uh, not much at all, but what it does is it just revitalizes it and just makes them stick better. Um, I might put a touch of attraction on them today as well. So I've got some pineapple goo with me, but let's just put that back where it was, which is down here. It definitely didn't fight as hard as it should have done that carp for being a double. Right, where's our bomb? There we go. So hopefully I don't lose that little tail rubber. I don't know where I've put it though. There it is. So that little bit of tail rub is really important. I will show you why. Just need a little bait and needle. And I'll show you why we need that in a second. I'm just gonna put one of these hook lengths on. They're a nice big size 10 feeder hook. We've got our little quick change swivel there, which makes it really easy to change hook lengths. But we obviously don't want the hook length coming off the quick change swivel, especially when we're playing a fish. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push this little baiting needle through this tiny bit of rig rubber and feed that over the hook length, the bottom of the hook length. Can you see that on the camera? I'm hoping. Yep. And this is obviously a figure of eight loop knot just as you would with a normal method feeder. And then we want to put our quick change swivel hook over there, pull it tight. And then I want to feed that little bit of rig rubber back over the quick change swivel. And that'll just stop the hook length coming on. And you can pull that right back into that bomb. And there you go. That's your bomb set up. Nice and simple, nice and easy. Got a couple of hook lengths there in case we get broke. But on this nine pound line, you'd like to think that I wouldn't. But there you go, simple setup. Like I said, one and a half ounce NGT weight. And we're just gonna put one of these Aqua Stim F1 Sweet Supreme little wafters on because that's the most like a pellet. And if there's any silt in here, this is just going to sit on top of the silt. Critically balanced against the weight of the hook. What that means is that the hook is just weighing the wafter down onto the bottom. It's not going to be floating up. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to try in the margin and then we'll work our way around clockwise until we find if there's any fish in the swim. just gonna gently put a couple of small little handfuls of these two mils over the top more for the noise than anything because the noise can bring the fish onto the feed and there we go we'll see if we get any more fish on the bomb I'm definitely having more indication on the right hand side where we got that fish well folks quick update for you i've had nothing on the bomb so far i've worked my way around so i'm probably i don't know at the 10 o'clock position from my swim there nothing else down this margin yet my dad's swim's gone quiet as well hopefully it wasn't just a mad hour this morning where we've got lucky and there was a few fish hanging about but we'll keep at it we'll probably be fishing through till about I don't know, two o'clock-ish today, something like that. And I'm hoping that we're going to have a few more fish between now and then.
so far we're quite impressed by the fishery it seems like a nice place obviously popular it's a weekday today it's not a weekend and it's really busy so seems like there are a decent stock of carp in here and they all seem to be a, a, a pretty decent average size from what we've seen so far you know you might have to fish all day to get a double figure carp at a lot of these coarse fisheries but we've had two in an hour so can't complain at that just had a really violent take on the feeder the line got snagged on my rest here hopefully it hasn't damaged it i'll have to take it easy though just in case it has Oh my god. I, I mean, I don't think it's massive, but it's running. I've got my drag set fairly high as well. No, it's a good fish, that. Common as well. No wonder. It shots off. Let's get it uh, over this other line if I can. It's got me on the other line now, great. That's it on this side here. I'm going to check my line as well just in case it's nicked when we land it if we land it <laughs> it's crazy isn't it how that right hand side is more productive than that left hand side it's like why why is it that's what interests me about fishing there's something that they must like about that right hand side Maybe they feel safer. Stirring up the silt on the bottom there. Looks like a wily old common. Whoa. Got it. Missing half of its scales on that left hand side there. Oh, perfectly on the side of the mouth. Absolutely nailed my hook bait, but this is interesting. Let me show you something. Let's get this hook out of its mouth. Well, it's got another hook in its mouth. Bloody QM1. It's a QM1, Dad. You want it? <laughs> uh, yeah, so it's it's broke somebody there. It did shoot off this, Dad. Absolutely. check its mouth i'm going to actually put some carp curse stuff on it because it's looks like it's gone a bit infected there where it's had that hook still in it there we go now i'll just help it heal it does work that as well doesn't it yeah. but it's been through enough this fish i won't keep it out too long but that's a good fish, that dad. No, it's not that. What are you giving me for that one? Six or seven. <laughs> what, do you, what do you actually think it is? Nine? No. It's heavy. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, it's fat. Look at it. A massive belly on it. I don't know. I, I, I'm going to go eight, eight pound for that. Ooh. Still got loads of fight in it, but yeah, obviously broke somebody. Well, folks, another cracker of a fish, that. Just check my main line, because like I said, it got caught on this here. I've had that a couple of times on them Guru rests. But still a good rod rest. Hook point's still sharp. So far, the method feed is winning over the bomb. I've not had a, I've not had a knock on the bomb. Really, with a bomb, what we should be doing is pinging pellets over the top of it. And that's how you get the best out of a bomb, but obviously we're not allowed to use, we're not allowed to ping loads of pellets out here. So I can't do that. Which is a shame. I tell you what, they do fight hard, yeah? Definitely putting a bend in the rod. Pulling drag as well. Don't want to try and bully it too much because that's how you end up with hook pulls. Got to have a 
fine balance between how much pressure you put on them and not letting it get to a slack line. If you let it slack line then there's more chance here, more chance of the fish throwing the hook. It's another good one. Try and keep it away from that side if I can. More towards the middle. Let it tire itself out this way. There we go. Thought it was a leather cap then. It's got one row of scales down its back. Look, nice fish. Broken thin. It's like all bent round. Like. It didn't stop it fighting though. Bit of a parrot looking thing. First thing, first one I've seen with a bit of a damaged mouth. Right hand side again. Yeah. Yeah, we've all been down that right hand side. Nothing on the bomb. It's weird, isn't it? Because it's the same set of reeds. You'd have thought they'd patrol all the way around. Well, clearly they don't. Dad's just got a fish on and it was halfway across the lake. Look at it, it's over here. <laughs> Opposite side at bank, straight across from me. <laughs> he's actually, um, he's just put a big pineapple wafter on. So, they might want a slightly bigger hook bait. I've had a bit of a bite on the bomb, but I struck into it and there was nothing there. So I don't know what happened there, but it was a good pull round. When I reeled it in, there was a, quite a bit of debris on the hook. So maybe that's just obscured the hook point. That wind's picking up now. That sun's gone in, which might be good for the fishing to be honest. Right, I'm going to bring my rods in and we'll go and see what my dad's got. <laughs> it's halfway across the lake, that dad, wasn't it? <laughs> oh, this is on the big pineapple wafter. Crazy, isn't it? It works that, doesn't it? What size hook are you using with it? Like a 10? So, we have really good success on these method feeder of fishing. Big 12 mil, sticky baits, pineapple wafters. Very strong smell to them. And this is probably about an eight or nine pound common. <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a chunk that, dad, honestly. Hard work with them longer rods, isn't it? Yeah, they... It's quite a tight swim, but obviously a productive swim. Oh yeah, Ooh. dad, that's a, that's a beast. Only just stalked. So, again, method feeder, small method feeder, big pineapple wafter. Size 10 hook, it looks like. A size 10 feeder hook, though. And just a bait screw, just to help weigh it down. Really nice fish. Long. I bet that's a double. Easy. If I'd have caught it though, it would have been eight pound. <laughs> Six. <laughs> I mean guys, literally just recast back out after my dad having that fish. What a blinding day today. I think everybody else on the lake's fuming because <laughs> they're not gonna not be able to catch him. Like it was, yeah, right on side again. Mental, innit? Nothing down that left. A bit of a bite to be fair before, but yeah, man, you, you just had that big one down on your left hand side yeah. under that tree. Yeah. It's not a bad fish though, it's still about six pounds, innit? Yeah. Not small, is it? <laughs> but small than that, it? Did you not want to wear that fish that you just caught? Yeah, I did actually. Did you put it back? I don't think it was. It was a nice fish, but I don't think it was heavier than that mirror that you caught. Quite heavier than that, mate. Yeah, I think that one was the one that you missed. <laughs> yeah, it probably was. <laughs> probably spat out my bomb rig and went straight for your big pineapple wafter. Yeah, I was quite surprised. Actually. It's peaky. Why, why's peaky your cap gone? Like a off colour. Like, have you bleached it? No. <laughs> I think it's colour off the ground bit. Yeah. 
I was quite surprised actually when, when I got there and it, it was me right hand off and I thought Oh. No, I, I, well, I saw you. <laughs> well, like, over there. <laughs> it was. I saw you. I saw your rod tip go upwards like that. It, it was just shoot, <laughs> shooting <was> just... off. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> we we get we always get fish on them pineapple wafters, don't we? Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah, it's well. it's such a simple thing, like just to put a little bait screw on. But you need the bait screw to weigh them down, don't you? Otherwise, yeah. you don't sink. Yeah, yeah. With, with the bait screw. That, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm going to get my method feeder back down this right hand side because they're all coming from there. So the guy right next to me also fishing down this margin, he's not had anything, but he's fishing full out. Um, don't know, is what it is. I, I, I've not seen anybody else catch for a while, have you? No. Them, the guys that were uh, first came when we did this morning over to the island, they've stopped catching now. That swim's gone dead, but we're catching pretty consistently. But I'm going to get this back out now and see if we can get another. Well, no wonder I've not had anything on the bomb. <laughs> ah, God, it come off and stuck in my finger then. Oh. oh. Oh, it's right in there. Look at that. Ouch. That's how a carp feels. Oh. These old boys that are fishing down this side, they're seeing us catching. They have not had anything, and he's, he's bloody moving down here next to my dad's peg <laughs> with his float rods. But um, yeah, I think they think it's the area rather than the, the techniques. Hey, dad. <laughs> oh dear, it'd be interesting to see whether he actually catches though. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but if that was me, I wouldn't dream of like up sticking pegs and moving right next to somebody in the next peg along. Would you? I don't know. But yeah, he's, he's moving all his stuff around here. <laughs> Absolutely mental. I don't know. I'd just rather be as far away from other people as possible when I'm fishing. Prefer the peace and quiet. I'd rather go to a little quiet corner somewhere. And you know what? I think you'd have a better chance of catching as well. Sometimes. Must think we know what we're doing. <laughs> so while the fishing's gone a little bit quiet, let's talk about the facilities that this fishery's got. Like I said to you before, really big car park, good parking, fairly easy access to the fishery. Um, it's a short walk from the car park down to your pegs, depending on obviously which side of the lake that you choose. It seems to be that the island side or potentially this side any of the reeds where my, me and my dad are fishing that are the good spots. Oh. Always when I'm talking, always. Right, I'll get you on the other camera. It's a lovely carp. The owner's coming around, so I won't be able to get a picture with it, I don't think, but really chunky fish. Probably a double. Like I said, they're all in great condition. Let's get it back. Well, I had to get that fish straight back because the owner was coming around and I didn't want to be taking pictures and what have you and filming the fish uh, when she was coming around but uh, the fella next to me he says I'm uh, said I'm starting to get on his nerves because I'm catching so much <laughs> which is funny but um, yeah let's see if we can get another one all of them have been down this right hand side here so my dad's swim's gone quiet by the looks of it really good day so far every single fish has been near double or a double figure fish pretty much God, it's coming down now, this rain. I'm just about under my brolly. I might have to pull it over me a little bit more. Bait runner's on. And... Some camera bag and that's not getting wet. It's better. So this old boy's fishing right into my dad's swimming margin. 
Absolutely crazy, isn't it? But interested to see whether he actually gets anything from moving. My God, he's going to get soaked. This is another one of them football shaped carp. One of them football shaped ones, Dad. Not right again. Yeah. Margin. That's a good fish that. A bait runner on this other one. Look at the shape of this one. It's chunky though, isn't it? Look at it. It's a weird shape, isn't it? Look, he's been broke twice. He's been snapped straight away down your margin. Got a fish, first chuck. It's broken. Yeah, but Ooh, we nearly lost it. <laughs> That's uh, a bit deformed, isn't it? It's very deformed, but still a chunk. Look at the big back on it, very dark fish. Oh, like yeah. a natural, like a wild carp, isn't it? Mm. Chap across from us has just been broke straight away. <laughs> I think there's some absolute beasts in here, so I definitely wouldn't be coming here with light tackle, would you, Dad? No. Not at all. Really like interesting fish like that. That's an heavy fish. Again, coming up to a double. Really fat. Well, I'm starting to like this fishery. So, the fella next to us here, he's just been broke as well. So, it just tells me you just need to be fishing heavier, guys. Please, please. Take this advice, if you take one thing away from this video, is fishing heavier doesn't put the fish off. I'm fishing 10 pound mainline, nine pound hook length, and I've not had anywhere near a breakage today. If you're taking one thing away from the video, take that advice. It doesn't matter, does it, Dad? So you might as well fish heavier. Makes absolutely no difference, does it? Yeah, exactly. Take it from me, fish heavier. It won't put the fish off. You don't need to fish light, and you're uh, in with your best chance of landing anything that you hook. Because I think a lot of the times, you know, people wonder why they aren't catching the double figure fish and things like that but more often than not they're the fish that'll break you aren't they yeah, yeah. they go speeding off for those of you that are new to the channel i'll just run through the gear that i'm using today quickly so i've got my shimano speedmaster rods they don't actually make these anymore um really good rod very soft rod you can still pick them up nearly new from time to time and then i've got a daiwa regal bait runner reel so this is a small 3000 reel ideal for feeder fishing chur i'm using is a capolan feeder chur there's a review about that on the channel and i've just made a modified uh, arm here this is actually for pole socks but i've put two preston gripper butt rests on there and then this rod rest is i think it's a guru reaper is what it's called the feeder arm comes with a chur it's all a set like i said i'm fishing really heavy that's 10 pound main line daiwa sensor main line and then nine pound guru engage hook lengths Fish on folks, fish on. All from down that right hand margin. Sorry if you can't hear me, it's got really windy. Really do fight hard here. Listen to it pulling drag. That's really locked up that drag as well. Very, very impressed with this fishery. I'm surprised that it's not more popular based on the average size of carp. Look at this folks, what a beautiful fish. Nice linear scale pattern. Nailed in the corner of the mouth there, we've got our wafter back as well. God, really nice fish that, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Nice scale pattern on it. Well, I've been waiting for that to go around. I've had loads of little twitches on it. There must be small fish in here as well, but it's probably been about 20 minutes since that last fish. <laughs> Got 
go on some crazy runs here, that's for sure. That's a nice one, long fish. All nice fish to be fair. disease on this one maybe it's missing a scale let's get some of my carp curse stuff on it it's covered in like these little wart things don't know what they are whether it is infection or not let's have a look at the other side of it you know, big cut out of it there Go. That's the bit for me. Stay on that side. Yeah, these are like weird gill warts. It's got it's, it's infected around its gill there as well. Let's get back. I'm telling you these things, guys, because it's real world struggles and what you have to deal with when you go fishing these days. And <laughs> The guy who was fishing next to my dad, he absolutely completely killed the swim because he's recasting every couple of minutes and he's absolutely piling ground bait in, which to be honest with you is banned here anyway. Now, it is what it is. These are things that you've got to put up with when you go out fishing and you need to be patient with people, especially us obviously with us having a YouTube channel. It's very easy for us to become a target or whatever. So we haven't said anything. But take this as a message, please guys, try and respect other people, try and not go right next to somebody, you know, if they've set up fishing. You don't have to be sat on somebody's knee if they're catching. Find somewhere else, there might be another spot that's even better, you don't know. So just try and respect everybody's personal space. But yeah, that's just a little message from me, especially if you're new to the hobby. Some people will come right next to you. Some people like to stay away, but have respect that somebody might not want you to set up right next to them. Just common fishing etiquette, really. I also tell you these things just so you know that these are just normal fisheries that we're visiting. You know, I know some of you think that we go to special fisheries. That's why we do so well. It's just a normal fishery. Anybody can fish here. Just like all the other places that we go to, that are standard course fisheries, day ticket waters, northern fisheries. So I just like you to get a good idea for what they're like and uh, whether you want to actually come and fish here yourself. I'll tell you what folks, I'm doing everything I can to try and get a fish down this left hand side. <laughs> I'm not giving up on it. I will get one down there at some point today. <laughs> My dad's not really had anything down that side either. It's mental here, honestly, it's so mental. Like, I can just hear people getting broke around the lake. Everybody's like, Ugh. swearing and shouting when they get broke. The fish got absolutely mental here. And my dad's not had anything since that chap moved in next to him, which is actually quite sad because he was having a good day up until that point. But it is what it is, I guess, isn't it? Tell you what folks, that's another near double. They've all got right bellies on them considering that nobody's allowed to put any feed in. This one's got um, odd gills as well. The other one was like that. Weird. It's like it's gill covers. Ooh, knocking me sick that actually. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a right chunky thing that. Definitely put you on best pay on. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> uh, literally just put it on the rest. Could be a good fish, this. 
Uh, pink wafter. What? On a wafter. 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 Pink wafter. <laughs> I'm pissing everybody off, I think, with how many I'm catching. <laughs> Oh dear. It's a nice fish, really good fish. Bonnie. Oh dear. They're all uh, really short, chunky fish here. That's got a right belly on it. Look at the belly on this thing. Absolute cracker. Wolf that down. Oh, look at that. Really bonny fish. Like I say, they're all pristine condition. That was just a bit tighter into the edge of that one and it went round a lot quicker. I'd only just dropped it in. I can't believe it. That's gone round hell of a lot quicker that time. Common. What a red letter day today's been. Ooh. This is 100% a double. It's coming in a lot easier than it should be. Oh, it's not even fitting in my net. Oh, there we go. <laughs> hey, Dad, this is definitely a double. Eleven four. Eleven four. Well, that's the biggest of the day. Let's get it back. Look at that, though. Huge. Dad's into a fish. Looks about four or five pound. Very, very, very good consistent fishing today. Well, Lakeside gets the thumbs up from us, I think. So if you're in the Chorley area, give it a go. Definitely, 100%. But I'll uh, do a little bit of a summary with my dad before we pack up. Dad's just had another cracker. Let's have a look at it, Dad. There we go. <laughs> They feel like a good one, Dad. Yeah. I mean, they're all good ones, aren't they? <laughs> it's, yeah, it's digging, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's all right. You, you concentrate on your run. I'll, yeah, I'll net it. Yeah. There we go. We got it. So, he's literally just swapped back over to them. And he's had a couple of fish in quick succession now. Brilliant. Well done, Dad. Uh, yeah, one last cast and uh, we'll see if we can get a couple more. Absolute red letter day today, Dad. Ooh. 
picking up in your peg now we're thinking of packing up <laughs> hmm. I've just seen the tail on this fish and I really do think it's a good fish it just keeps digging and digging and digging It'll be a three pounder now after all this build up <laughs> it's, not, it's not actually as big as I thought it's a decent fish though I've got it netting skills Oh, nice! No, absolute chunk, that. Long fish. It's the long ones that fight the hardest, isn't it? No, yeah, no, that's, <laughs> I think we'll weigh that. And yeah. I'll get some, oh, look at that. Somebody's snagged it in its side. <whistles> He's just put some of that carp cur stuff on it. Because it's got a couple of sores on it. It had a hook, <laughs> it still had a hook in one of its scales. Ten eggs out. Ten on the dot. On the dot. Absolute cracker. Really long fish, isn't it? Yeah. Well folks, we're about to call it a day and get packed up, but I've had a really good day and you've had a few fish yeah, as well, haven't you, Dad? Yeah, we have. Not quite as many as you, though. <laughs> well, it's only that little margin, isn't it, that's oh, producing yeah. all the fish. Ironically, the guy on the opposite side to me has had, he's had quite a few takes, hasn't he? Uh, yeah, I mean, he's, lo he's lost more. I think he's lost more than he's landed. Um, has he been fishing Paul? Yeah. So he's been fishing on Paul and he's been snapped maybe two or, two or three times. Yeah. Uh, which is absolutely ridiculous. You'd, you'd surely you would think, well, I've been snapped. I need to up my tackle, but I don't know whether they don't have the heavier stuff with them. I've landed every single fish that I've hooked today, which is which is brilliant considering the size of them. Yeah, isn't they're, it? yeah, they're all up around that double figure mark. So, like my dad just said, all the fish in here seem to be bordering on the 10 pound mark they're up like seven eight nine ten pound we've had a few double figure fish today which yeah. is epic isn't it yeah, it's not many places that you come to and no no the few and far between aren't they, to be honest so yeah, you're lucky if you get one aren't you? you know Somewhere. the likes of sort of like maybe limbrick you'd have a chance of having a couple of doubles in a day but you know there's there's not loads of places around the Chorley and Wigan area where you can come and consistently catch fish in the, you know, near £10 mark. So I'm really impressed by the place. I'd come again, wouldn't you, Dad? Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, it's so, a nice little fishery. Nice fishery. Fairly cheap to fish. £7 for one rod, £10 for two rods. You really can't complain with that. Somebody was saying in my comments uh, the other day that, you know, down south, fishing's like £17 for a day ticket now Ooh, yeah. for two rods. Crazy. So hopefully it don't it doesn't go to them kind of prices down here. No. Yeah, Dad. No. You won't be no. paying it, would you? You no. tell no. Not for two of us, <laughs> is it? You'd be paying your own. No. I, I pay I drive here and you pay, that's that's the deal that we have. Yeah. <laughs> I have to drive from Manchester every day and petrol costs enough. But yeah, we both had a good day. So you rate it, don't you? Oh, yeah. Good fishery. Yeah, yeah, good fishery. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, we've if we've done we... well, considering it's the first time we've been here. Yeah, never been before, ever. No. Um, we just looked at the lake, you know, the spot that we were originally going to fish hasn't been producing many fish today, but who knows? Is it, the, yeah, is it the techniques we're using? Is it where we're fishing? You don't know, dear. Do That's fishing at the end of the day, but. We seem to be pretty consistent most places yeah. that we go, don't we? Yeah. You've got to use your watercraft when you're fishing a new place like this. Make sure that you've, you're have you pretty confident on the peg that you've picked. And um, use the little tips that we give you in these videos. Don't forget, I am selling this Westies Angling merch. So I'll put a link in the description for an e-shop if I've got round to making it. Otherwise, you can just message me on the Westies Angling Facebook and Instagram. And uh, we'll get you some posted out. So if you do want to support the channel, feel free to send me a message. And if you don't want to buy anything, it's no problem. Still enjoy watching the videos and hopefully you pick up a couple of tips from it. So once again, thanks very much for watching. We'll see you next time, won't we, Deb? Yes. Where are, we, where are we thinking next time? Ooh, I think we'll do another fisher review next time. Yeah. We'll go somewhere different. Yeah. Possibly Orchardton, is it? Orchardton fishery or maybe even uh, Heskin. Is it called Heskin? Yeah, Heskin Hall Fishery. Heskin Hall Fishery. So they're the couple that have been recommended to us that we've never fished before. So uh, we'll keep on with the fishery reviews and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you next time.